Today we take a look at two disturbing cases from Japan, both similar in one way, though one was a major case that forever changed Japanese law codes. First, let's start off with the Aizawa Patricide case, also known as the Tochiki Patricide case. It's horrible, but very important. Tochigi, one of the more unassuming prefectures of Japan, with beautiful places like Nikko, rich in history, and Utsunomiya, a smaller city famous for gyoza. However, even in such a place like this, a horrible situation happened many decades ago. For those unaware, patricide is the murder of one's own father, with matricide being the murder of one's own mother. Killing your own parent seems awful, doesn't it? But with the case of the Aizawas, it's hard to have any sympathy for the father killed. Long story short, at the age of 15, Chiyo Aizawa was repeatedly raped by her alcoholic father for 15 straight years. She was more or less a slave to her father, forced to have six abortions and birth five children, only three of them survived, but they would be legally considered illegitimate. Once the mother found out what her husband was doing to their daughter, she left the family and moved to the colder, distant region of Hokkaido. Apparently, she tried to help her daughter out, but in the end, obviously not enough was done. Oh, I forgot to mention, this was going on throughout the 1950s and 60s, and, well, women's rights were pretty much non-existent at the time. The father had his own daughter sterilized. Can you imagine the hell Chio had to endure at the hands of her own father? Well, why didn't she say anything? Besides the fact that women barely had any rights, a daughter certainly didn't when trying to speak out against her own father. He forced her to act as his actual wife when they were out in public, and even threatening to kill their children if she said anything about the situation. Her brain was still developing, and even as an adult, she was already damaged, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. She did manage to live without her father's presence though as she worked, where she began to fall in love with someone. Once her father learned about this man, though, things took an even worse turn. Chio was locked up for 10 days, and it was during these 10 days Chio had enough. During one boozed-filled night, the father attempted to rape Chio, who stopped him from doing so, strangling him to death. And now it was time for the law to finally get involved. However, they paid no attention to her as a victim for 15 years. No one did, actually. Neighbors just assumed that the father and daughter were an actual couple. Here's the thing. Mr. Aizawa was killed in 1968. Do you know what wasn't against family law back then? Inbreeding. Do you know what was, though? Polygamy. No one knew the actual relationship between Aizawa and his daughter, with the wife living in Hokkaido, and their children were already labeled as illegitimate, so the crime now fell on the survivor, Chio. I don't want to get all technical in terms of law, but know this. Patricide was very different than a typical murder. The sentencing saw no room for any shorter punishment than life in prison or death. This traces back to the old ways of Japan with having such high importance for family. The killing of one's own family was just unspeakable. Well, Chiyo's lawyer was determined to reduce her sentence. With her life being detailed, the lawyer pleaded insanity for Chiyo due to the abuse she endured, and as an act of self-defense. The Utsunomiya Court District saw past the archaic laws regarding patricide and referred to the Japanese Constitution as this being a case against human equality. You see, after World War II, many changes were made to the Japanese Constitution with an emphasis on human equality. Let's take a look. All of the people are equal under the law, and there shall be no discrimination in political, economic, or social relations because of race, creed, 
sex, social status, or family origin. It was there in the Constitution, though the Japanese law codes still held matricide, patricide, whatever, with such strictness, whereas any other kind of murder could possibly be reduced to a mere three to five years. If we look at the Japanese law codes, in particular 199, it states that a person who kills another shall be punished by the death penalty or imprisonment with work for life or for a definite term of not less than five years. That makes sense, right? Penal Code 200 provides either the death penalty or penal servitude for life for killing the lineal ascendants of the criminal or his wife. Okay, whatever, you see that. There's no reducing here. Death penalty or life for the killing of a relative. However, if we look at the list of crime laws, 200 is deleted. Hmm. So, spoiler, it took at least five years battling the justice system in Tokyo, but Chiyo was let go with just a minimal punishment of two years of labor. She fought the law and she won. Not to mention the aftermath resulted in Penal Code 201, which abolished the previous family restrictions in Article 200. So, 201 states, a person who prepares for the commission of a crime prescribed under Article 199 shall be punished by imprisonment with work for not more than two years, provided, however, that the person may be exculpated in light of circumstances. Well, Chio definitely had some bizarre circumstances to work with. But all those codes about families, it all fell under the same murder code found in 199. Now, some may say murder is murder. Did she get a light sentence? Or perhaps the hell she endured for 15 years, her childhood being destroyed, her sanity breaking down, the rape, the abuse, that was certainly enough punishment. Regardless, it was a bizarre situation that forever changed Japanese law. Now let's look at another case. Let's go forward a few decades and move over to Shizuoka, Japan, home to Mount Fuji, a prefecture even more quiet than Tochigi. We have a would-be matricide situation. This happened in 2005, and I remember reading about this at the time, and the whole situation bothered me. Here's an article from the Japan Times. A 16-year-old girl has been placed under arrest for allegedly attempting to kill her mother by slowly poisoning her, police said Tuesday. The 47-year-old woman is in a coma. Here in the US, there have been many similar cases, lots of teenagers poisoning their mothers. Most just use bleach. This girl from Shizuoka, though, she used thallium. Think titanium, like element. I don't know much about the periodic table, but I do know something that resembles this should not come in contact with the human body in any form. It's a highly poisonous element that has a history of being used as poison for rats, though eventually would be used for poisoning and murdering humans. Well, how did this 16-year-old girl get her hands on such a dangerous thing? Apparently, she just forged some signatures and got some prescriptions from a doctor. But why thallium? Well, to answer that, the Shizuoka girl was apparently inspired by Graham Young, who used thallium to poison many people. He was known as the teacup poisoner throughout the 60s and 70s in the UK. Yeah, what a creeper, huh? So just a short history lesson on him. When Graham was a child, he practiced by putting all sorts of poisonous concoctions in his family's teas. This just made them all violently ill, but he studied and eventually he did kill his own stepmother. Eventually this traced back to Graham, who was put in a hospital where he ended up studying all sorts of medicines and poisons for the eight years he was in there despite being released due to the doctors deeming he was no longer obsessed with such things. Great throw check, huh? He eventually started poisoning employers' teas and co-workers' teas and, eventually, with the history of tea poisoning, it wasn't difficult to place him under arrest. 
He even had some thallium in his pockets when he was arrested. The police found a diary he had kept ever since he was a child, detailing all sorts of heinous poisoning practices throughout the years, keeping track of everyone he poisoned. Young claimed the diary was nothing more than a work of fiction. Right. He poisoned many, but only has about three or more deaths connected to his poisoning. This diary, though, is what separates him from other killers, as he obviously knew the science behind it all. So let's fast forward a few decades and go to a different part of the world. We have, in the form of a teenage girl, a copycat. She too detailed her own poisoning techniques in a diary. She used thallium just like Graham, but has also publicly stated she was influenced by Graham. Although her mother was the only human victim, her diary states she first practiced using poison on animals. Now about that mother that was in a coma, these articles from 2005 or 6 are pretty much all I can find. I can't find any updated information about this case. I did however find her online diary, and it's really strange. It's an inside look at an obviously mentally disturbed teenager. The way she writes though, it's all very dissociated. Like she can't tell the difference between being awake and being in a dream. And she shows no remorse whatsoever. She details all sorts of agonizing pain her mother felt from the months of being slowly poisoned to disturbing details about killing animals and cats. So you may have some sympathy for a 16 year old girl, but after reading a few of these articles, I feel no sympathy whatsoever, especially what she did to poor innocent cats. So how did she get caught? Well, at first she tried poisoning herself to sort of throw off the trail. However, once her room was searched, there was thallium found and a book about Graham Young. Teachers at the girls elite high school described her as serious and hardworking with a bright future ahead of her as a chemist. But her blog, in which she used code names to refer to her mother and the poison, revealed how she managed to hoodwink her teachers. I got sympathy from my teacher when I tearfully talked about mother, she wrote. I guess people are more gullible than I had imagined. As her mother lay gravely ill, the girl wrote, I took a photo of her today, as I did yesterday. My brother said I had a penetrating stare and that he was horrified. The girl reportedly denies attempting to kill her mother, who says she drank the thallium by mistake. The mother remains critically ill in a coma. I hope she got the help she needed. I hope her mother recovered. I hope she feels remorse for what she did to her own mother and many helpless animals, and I hope she has a better role model in her life other than the famous British killer Graham Young. So there you go, two cases in Japan, one on patricide, the other on matricide. I'll do more short videos like this detailing true crimes throughout the world, mainly focusing on Japan, so stay tuned.